Good morning, everybody. And uh, thanks for joining today's webinar on search portal for windshield, simplifying the windshield interface. Um, I know we had about 20 people that had um, accepted the invite. So let us give them a minute and a half to let them join um, the webinar as well. And soon as they join, we will um, start. All right, I think we can uh, start. So before we start, a couple of house rules. All attendees are in uh, listen-only mode. And um, the questions will be handled right at the end of the, the webinar. So let's look at the agenda for today. So I will uh, make a quick introduction of myself and boundary systems, um, take you through the topic overview. And then uh, we have a live school demonstration. And like I said, at the end, we'll handle the Q and A um, session. So one thing that I just need to add on there is while the presentation is going or the demonstration is going, you can start um, typing your questions in the questions se section in the webinar, and then um, we'll then attend to them at the end. Right, uh, my name is Ephraim Poyeng, a PLM specialist at Bontre Systems with over um, five years experience on PDC products, specifically Winchell, um, I mean, this is now PDM, uh, PDM link, project link, um, some quality modules, PDC integrity, and, um, and other tools. I am also a certified Winchell implementer and trainer. About boundary systems. So we regard ourselves as the technology leaders with PDC being our main partners. There's other partners that we, we work with that I will mention a bit later. Uh, Boundary System is part of PDS Vision Group of global companies. So the tool that we will be looking at today, the search portal is developed in-house by PDC, PD, PDS Vision. So we offer capabilities in product lifecycle management, data management, CAD designs, and we also do some consulting work, simulation and product development for our customers. So we have a list of um, some of our customers um, on, the, on the right here. Um, so a bit more about boundary systems. Um, we have won a couple of industry awards. We are also aggregated by PDC as their platinum partner. Um, 
we are certified to implement WinChill on all the modules. Um, we are also their preferred um, service provider. And we are also authored and certified to train on Grio, WinChill, Mathcat, Abotext, and other WinChill tool, uh, and, uh, and other PDC tools as well. So as I've said, that PDC is our main partner. We also work with other um, companies like Iterage, ATI, Keyshot, ZW CAD, um, which is more like a replacement of AutoCAD. There. And then if you have any technical questions, at the end of the uh, webinar, you can also reach out to me by email me, emailing me on epoeng at boundaries.com or any sales queries that sales at boundaries.com. You can also visit our website at boundaries.com and we also have a YouTube channel called Boundaries System um, where this particular webinar will also be uploaded. So if you need to revisit um, this webinar later, um, it will be uploaded in our on our Winchell YouTube platform. All right. So what business challenges does PD, PDS search portal for Winchell um, address? So um, the tool that we're looking at today. So in many cases, the PLM environment is, is too complex, or Winchell itself is, is too complex um, for, for some of the roles, uh, because in most of the companies, it is centered around the design team. Um, so with, with that, it makes it very difficult for the people that doesn't use it um, on a day-to-day basis, very difficult to find uh, data out of, out of Winchell. So what happens with that is the simple way to basically resolve this is to just turn out to someone who uses the system in, in uh, daily, like the people in the design office. Suddenly there are individuals in the design team acting as a service um, for other roles in the enterprise. So they basically now have to supply them with that information from Winchell, and this takes away uh, the designer's time, and uh, as a result, make them very unproductive. And and also by by passing the system, we can easily end up with an issue of quality, um, because I mean, for an example, if we have this designer that exports drawing to the file server somewhere for the purchasing department, for an example. After a few weeks, um, are this far still the latest drawings? No. So um, we might be using um, obsolete data uh, to, to do some of those things. So the solution for this is the tool that we will be presenting to you today, which is PDL Search Portal. So it has a very simplified user interface and it also sort of sits on top of Winchell, so like a window to the Winchell, Winchell data. Um, and it also uses Winchell to authenticate and um, also serve the access rights um, for Winchell. And to be able to have access to the system and be able to retrieve this data, you need a basic Winchell license for this. And the other thing we're mentioning is the, the tool itself is highly customizable. So you can design an interface um, to meet certain department's um, requirements. So in terms of what information um, they need to access and design an interface that addresses that requirements for, for that specific department. Right. And, and uh, something worth mentioning while we're still on this page is that because the tool itself sits on top of Winchell, 
you don't need additional hardware requirements um, to set it up. And the other benefit is it's very easy to, um, to install on top of Winjob and get it uh, running quick. So let's look at the tool itself. So this is also web-based, um, like Windchill. So I'm going to click on the link to the, to the portal. And you'll see that it prompts me for my username and password. So I'm going to type this in. And I mean, this is the information that I use to also access Windchill. And as soon as I do that, um, my interface is now unlocked. So at the top here, um, you would have a logo, your company logo, um, if you need to, to, to have that on there. And we also have the reports. So these are the Winchell reports um, that you can pull. So if I click on the, on the reports here, you'd see I can pull all the problem reports. For example, I can go and say, what are the open problem reports um, currently in Winchell? So this will go pull this information and then return all the problem reports that I have in Winchell. So it does return the three problem reports that I have open. So at any time to filter my um, results down, I can always search for the, for the name on the list of results that I get. And then only that sort of results will be retained. If I click on the number link, um, as well here, yeah. this would take me straight into the Winchell uh, platform. So if I open this up in another tab, and then I move over to, to that, you will see that, or you'll notice that we are now in the Winchell environment. So environment. So this platform um, sort of gives you a window to, to Winchell as well. So I can see and uh, look for any additional information that I might be interested on um, in the Winchell side of things. So I'm going to jump back to, to the interface itself. And as I said, you can also pull some of the reports like your, your change request, um, your change notices, um, reports from, from the system. So I'm going to go back to, to the main landing page. Um, so the other thing on here, if you look to the top right corner, you have the quick links. So quick links, this is where you can just add any internet or intranet links that you, you would normally use or you'd normally want to reference while you are in the, in the, in the portal itself. So you'd see I've got the PDS, uh, the PDC one as well as boundary systems. And the other thing is you can also create a problem report from the, the tool itself. We will, we will do that um, at the end. Right. And then the settings option here is basically to pick on the columns um, that should be returned when you search for um, an object. And there's also general settings that you can enable or disable um, in the system. Right, then you, you can search based on the number on the baseline or um, an ECN. So if objects are part of the baseline of the ECN, they would be re uh, returned. You can also specify the revision. So any revision you can specify. And because the system is customizable, you are able to add on here um, some of your additional revisions that are not listed in the out of the box setup. You can also search um, uh, by state as well. So if I'm looking for a certain object, but I'm looking for a released version of it, I can also do that. Then some of the options that you also have on the list here is basically what you would need to be returned when you search for this information. For an example, a structure of your, your, um, your assembly. If you're searching for the assembly, any drawings, documents, DXFs, or stuff files that might be linked to, to that information, um, and you'd go and 
it will, the system will then return that information as well. So I'm gonna go and search a file that's in Winchell. And you'll also see as soon as you, you type something in, it sort of auto completes whatever you, you, you're searching for. So it basically queries Winchell live as you, as you type in, um, in the number. So I click on what I'm looking for, and then I click on search. Then the search returns the part that I've um, searched for, and um, any part that's got uh, that name as well as, it, as its number. And then um, also on this column here, you've got an information icon. So if I click on this information icon, this also links me directly to Angel. If I want to look at this object in Winchell, you can click on that. And there's also a thumbnail um, a grid view icon as well on here. So if I move my mouse over it, it also shows me the picture of um, this particular um, object. And the name and the number, the revisions, and the revisions are returned there. Um, also, if there is any files that are linked to, to this parts, for an example, let's say specification document, document that's been linked on there um, is also been returned. There's a step file, a PDF drawing. I also have a DXF um, that is also linked um, on here. So this is how you'd go about searching for, for that. And also, I can quickly just click on this free of view icon and uh, quickly open up this file in free of view. So I'm just gonna show you that. This file um, is now opened in, in free of view. So yeah, at this stage, if I need to do any um, redlining, any annotations on this file, I can do that. And also, if I want to save that sort of information back into Winchell, I've got the option to save my annotation. And this will save that annotation back in, in Winchell. So if you're a checker and you don't want to go through Winchell for, uh, for reviewing some of the documents, you can actually do it from the search portal app itself and then save any annotations back into, into Winchell. Right, so I'm gonna go back to that. Right, and now if I wanna do a different search, I can basically go and clear all. Then it removes that data from, from all my results from the, the search. So I'm gonna go and search again for a different file. So this is the file that I'm searching for. And I want to make sure that it returns all that data that we need. I can also say, um, give me a bomb structure um, of this particular assembly. And you'll see it gives me the levels of the structure. Zero obviously being the main object. And then you've got the ones there being the first level of the structure. I can also go and say, give me the multi-level structure. Then it then expands my um, results to show all the different structures of this assembly. So I'm now able to see uh, level two, level three, and, and so on. And also with the bomb, I can also see the quantity. Um, and the files are also attached still on there, and um, the states that it is on the revision, that information is also uh, retained. And then you also see once you search for the results, there's a new sort of toolbar that pops up right on top of the results table. So the Excel option that you see here, it basically exports this whole list of um, the results into an Excel file. So I'm gonna go and export it out save it out as an Excel. Now I'm going to go and just open up that Excel file. 
So we have the Excel downloaded. And you will see once this Excel file is now open, this is how that bond information will be shown and exported on Excel. And the nice thing about this is the Excel itself also retains the links to um, Windshield itself. So if you click on this links from, from the Excel, it will take you to those components in, in Windshield. So that's how you, you get that out to Excel quickly. Right, and then the, the next thing that you can also do is to export this out into a zip file. So if I hit export here, it will then go and export this into the zip file. So that zip file will contain that Excel file that I've shown you, including all these files that are um, attached to this uh, component. And then you'll be able to access that information from, from that zip file um, as well. Right. And then the, um, the other thing I wanted to, to show you is, um, you might find that the guys in the purchasing department already have a list of um, parts that they want to export out um, the drawings for to send out to manufacturing. So they might have a, um, an Excel file like this that they have exported out of an ERP system. So you'll see that this file here has got, it's a, it's a simple Excel file that you, I mean, you can create from scratch and just populate it with um, the part numbers that you, you need to export our drawings for. And uh, mine also here has got suppliers. Um, so this could be information coming from the ERP system. So then what I can then do is take this ERP export, pull it into um, the search portal system to use as my base for search. So I've got this file. Now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear the search here. And what I simply do is pick my Excel, but I can drop it on the app here. And I get this pop up. So I basically select everything because I want to export everything. And I just pick any item on the numbers. Column. Um, so this is the column that you would use to search this information. And you'll also notice the background of the column also changes. And I click OK. Then you'll see on my number search here, it, it says it needs to search, so it will be selecting the search from the file. And I just hit search. Then now it uses whatever Excel content that I have shown you to basically um, populate my table here. So because I'm wanting to export the drawings out to a um, manufacturer, I'll then go and search for all the drawings on here. And you will see my table here just to show me only the drawings. And at this stage, I can select all of them and then decide that I want to go and zip these files um, out or export them out as a zip. I can decide whether I want uh, this export to be of low resolution um, or I want it to export the files as, as is. So when I do that, and I'm going to just give it a name, manufacturing A. So I want to send it from manufacturing A and then export. That's my zip file, and I'm gonna go ahead and save it. So it saves my export out. So that is the zip file that I'll be sending out to, to manufacturing. So if I just show you the contents of these, you also see 
this is only the PDF um, exports that we have extracted out of out of the system. Right. Then um, the uh, other cool thing that you can also do from from the search itself is um, I can select on something. So I can go and select on this particular item here. Click on the actions drop down. And then um, on here, if if this item has got multiple uh, iterations or multiple revisions, I'm able to pull the history and then it will show me all the history versions of this. Or I can quickly go and see where this item is actually used. And it then shows me that this item here, it is used in, in this particular assembly here. So it makes it very quick if um, there is the sort of information that you, you're looking for. And the other very cool thing that you can also do is um, if you, for an example, you working on the shop floor and you looking at one of these assemblies here or drawings um, here, and you realize that there is an issue with a certain drawing or a certain part, um, you can quickly create a problem report from the system here. You don't have to go into go back to Winchill to do that. So, for an example, if I have picked up an issue on this um, particular part here, I can select on it, actions, and then create a problem report. Then, when I get to this page here, it asks me in what context or in what product in Winchill would I want to create this uh, problem report in. So I can go and say, I want to create it in that particular product there. And I can also give it a name. Give it a name, specify the category. So this information is actually information that's been pulled from, from Winchell. So we can say this is a quality issue, and I can also set the priority in there. And you can also specify where this information is coming from and give a description on the change material just here. That sort of information. And then I, I can also attach any supporting files um, regarding this request and then click OK. Then this program report is now created and whoever is a change administrator in Winchell responsible for reviewing this program, uh, uh, program report will receive a task to review this program report. So at this stage, I can also go to reports, look at all the open program reports. Find it, and you'll notice um, our BRIM report that we've just created now becomes part of, of that. So that information is readily available um, from this portal um, uh, as, as you search for it. And I'm gonna go to back here again. So the one last thing um, that I also think is very cool as well and very useful is so I can also enable the in-app view of any PDF, so the inline view of any PDF document by just clicking on this icon here. I'm basically enabling the, the PDF preview inside of this browser. And what I can then do is click on any PDF file from uh, my results here. And then that uh, the regular drawing will then be um, visible on the, on the viewer here as well. So when some of these PDF files, you don't even have to open them in Creo view first to be able to um, 
to view the contents of it, which is something that would be very useful, especially for the shop floor people that um, basically want to view information and so on. And with that said, um, that, that is sort of all I wanted to, to, show, to show you um, with the PDS search. So if you have any question, please post it in the um, question session and I will be able to um, attend to it. Okay, the, the one question that I have in here is, does it work with the Windchill 10.2? Yeah, so the older version of, of the PDS portal, that there's few changes, the interface itself, but there is an older version of it that, um, that works with Windchill 10.2 still. Yeah, I hope that answers your question. But the one thing I was meant to show you as well is, so I've got a couple of, if you've got a couple of baselines um, that contain some of the, the objects in there, you can also search um, that baseline. So I've got one here, so you can search for that baseline and, and then it will just show information that is um, in that baseline. So I've got the simple baseline here of only three items in it. Um, so you can search for, for that if you are using baselines and you'd be able to get that information and pretend. All right. So yeah, that is, that is all I wanted to show as far as PDS search for all is concerned. I'm going to bring up the uh, contact information here. So like I said, if you need any information as far as technical issues are concerned or questions are concerned, you can email me at epoyang at boundarysys.com. For any sales queries, um, sales at boundarysys.com. Um, visit our website, boundarysys.com. Also our YouTube channel, Bunch of systems. And like I said, um, that is where this webinar will also be uploaded in, in the next day or two. Yep, so I see there is no questions in the question section. So I will give you additional two minutes. If you have any any questions regarding the search portal, um, please feel free to type them in there. Or else you can also reach out to me via an email. So I see there is no further questions. Um, I just wanted to reiterate uh, the benefits of, of the tool itself is that uh, it's very easy to, to implement. It's very quick and easy to implement. You do not need any additional hardware or a separate server for it to uh, run from. So it sits right on top of, um, of Winter. And in an hour or so, you would be up and running with the out of the box um, setup. And it also makes it easy for other departments to search and access information that they, um, they are looking for. So with that said, 
I would like to thank everyone for attending and have a very good rest of the day. Thank you.